Hello, cheapskaters. Welcome. My name is Kath Armstrong. I'm the creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. We're really pleased to meet you. And if it's not, welcome back. It is Tuesday, the 24th of May, 2022. And this is a YouTube live event. So if you are watching this on the replay, we're still glad you could come and watch. Now, let me just see. I'm going to try, hi guys, I'm going to try some new things tonight. <laughs> so bear with me because you just know me and technology have this issue. Um, but I thought we'd have some fun because as I was tidying up my desk, I just picked up this packet of little, not very nice, trying to get a good angle, Whoop, going the wrong way, little peg magnets. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to send them to someone because I don't want to put them away. So we'll do a random draw at the end of the show. I'll do a random draw. I've set it up. Hopefully I've set it up right. And um, someone will find some peg magnets in the mail to them. Just because we can and because I'm too lazy to put them away, really. Well, we've got a lot of people with us tonight. I'm going to quickly say hello. Now, I know some of you don't like the hellos at the beginning of the show, but I do that for a reason. Two reasons. First, I like to say hello to you. And secondly, it gives people that are running a little bit late time to catch up with us and to jump in so they don't miss out from the very beginning. So it only takes a couple of minutes. If you're watching on replay, scoot through this bit if you don't like it. And I'd like to say thank you to Delaney for being our moderator tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. That takes a big load off my shoulder. I know that we are all nice and polite and kind and caring and we understand the rules, but there are occasionally people that don't or trolls, so... Now we'll be able to jump on them straight away. Oh, give me some truth. Hello. Hello, Barb. Feel free to leave whenever you need to. And it's more than 30 years since I left school. Way more than 30 years since I left school. I was suddenly thinking about it. Hello, Amber. Hello, Yvonne. Um, Jane, she's got her Tim Tams ready. Who else? And Jenny, nice to have you with us tonight. Catherine, Julie, Kerry's got silver side for dinner. Sounds really good. Hello, Pam. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Trish. I hope I don't disappoint you. Um, hello, Beverly, Lucinda, Kathy. Um, Kathy did a quick pasta bake and my basic cake. Oh, I love that cake. Been making it for years. So good. Hello, Sylvia. I'm glad your kids liked it too, Kathy. Yvonne J, Michelle, Sheena, Amy. Oops, lost a whole lot of people. Where'd they all go? There's lots of people with us tonight. Maureen, um, Outback Six, Mrs. Dillagaf, Aradia, Catnaps. That oh, sounds good. That's what I need. Ms. Aussie Thunder, Jaka, Carol, Mary, uh, Deb, Jane S, Sandra O'Day, Jody, Karen, ladies, Karen Herring's on the um, invalid list. She broke a toe. It's very sad. I feel so bad for you. I shouldn't be laughing. I really do feel bad for you. Suzanne. Aimed before Judith, Gail. Okay. Kathleen Hughes. Great. All right. I've reached the bottom of the list. Beverly's asking. No, who was asking? Was it Beverly? Someone was asking. Karen was asking, how's everyone going with the challenge? I will fess up and say I cheated on Friday. We had um, last Friday was a horrific day for us. We left home 
just after nine. We didn't get back till after four. It was just back to back um, appointments, emergency appointments, and it was just terrific. And I'd finished my water, and I finished Wayne's water, and I just needed a coffee, so I gave him a bought a coffee. Um, and I felt bad while I was doing it, but I sighed the coffee. So I thought I'd fess up and tell you. It was a horrific day, and if I didn't have that coffee, I was going to rip someone's head off because I was not feeling very good. So, um, yeah, otherwise we've been doing okay. The boys have given up. Well, no, they haven't really given up. They gave in and bought fresh milk last week. They decided they didn't like UHT, so they've got their own bottle of milk. Yesterday they bought their lunch because they both work from home now. So they bought their lunch and today they bought a loaf of bread because I hadn't made bread. So well, otherwise we are going really well and I have to laugh because Wayne saw Joy this afternoon and she asked him how we were going on the challenge and he's gone, what challenge? <laughs> So while he sort of in the back of his mind knew what we were doing, it hadn't actually affected him, hadn't impacted him in any way. So he hasn't missed out on anything. Everything's still rolling along the same at the moment, which is really nice to know. We'll see how it goes now. We're almost completely out. I've got potatoes left and carrots left and some celery left in the oh, and onions in the fresh veggies with some capsicums and a couple of eggplants that were the last of the garden that will have to be used up this week. Then we're out of the fresh veg and it will be onto the dehydrated or the frozen or the tinned veg and no salads, no tomatoes, no lettuce, no cucumber. Hmm. Might be me that misses out on those. Um, it has been interesting though because I've had fun trying to work out different ways to use what we have so the meal plan in the newsletter which is the meal plan that we were supposed to stick to has sort of gone by the wayside and I've rejigged it a bit so we've had slightly different things so that I to stretch me more than anything in my ability to think about well you know if this is what we've got what can I make so I've done that haven't done a lot of baking haven't done a lot of you know cakes or biscuits or anything although we're out of crackers which might be an issue by the weekend so I might have to whip up a batch of crackers otherwise we're going hmm, reasonably good garden's not really feeding us at the moment and that if this was a true um you know if we were really in a crisis and not able to get anything that would be a concern because, you know, there's things that are still a few weeks off. Like I've got parsnips in, I've got turnips in, I've got beetroot in, I've got peas, there's cabbages, cauliflower, broccoli, potatoes. But none of them are actually ready to eat now. The only thing I've got to eat now are oranges and rhubarb. So I don't know. That's something that I might need to work on. But when we do the roundup at the end of the month, I'll, I'll talk more about that because, you know, I do succession plant. But we had such a miserable summer garden that the autumn garden is not really taking off the way I thought it would be. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. So this is my darling. This is my darling. Hadn't realised exactly what the challenge was because he hasn't. It hasn't really affected him. And he thought I wasn't eating chocolate and snacks. Did I? Well, I don't eat a lot of snacks, but if there's chocolate in the house, I might eat that. Hmm. This. Um. I have got chocolate in the house because last week Coles had the Cadbury um, choc bits, the milk white and the caramel ones, on half price. So I got some of each of them to put in the pantry, but of course they're in the box in my bedroom, so I can't use them. Um, so there you go. All righty. Um, 
Kathy's struggling with fruit and veg, frozen spinach and pasta bake. That would be nice. I often would shred um, silver beet, shred it really, really finely to put in bag bowl or pasta bakes, things like that, soup, casseroles. But it's got to be really finely shredded or my lot would pick it out. Um, And your free bread maker's working. Very good, Kathy. That's great to know. Um, we're all starting. Yeah, we're all sort of running at the end, which is interesting, isn't it? Because we've been a couple of weeks now. We're all starting to get to the end of what we had in the crisper um, to keep us going. So that's really interesting. Oh, well, keep going. Don't give up. This is a learning experience for all of us. Um, oh, Kathleen needed cold and flu meds. Hmm. I think we've talked about um, a first aid pantry in the past, haven't we? So maybe we need to address that too. Oh, well done, Jodie. Jodie's been able to pay off a debt. Very good. Okay, now um, the giveaway. Did I tell you what you need to do? Hashtag magnets in your comments. And so hashtag, which, which is the hmm, above the three key, had to check it. Magnets, doesn't matter whether it's upper or lower case or whatever, it's just as long as it's hashtag magnets. And that will get you into the draw for the um, packet of magnets. Right, now let's, we better get on to this show or I'll get more complaints for waffling. Um, where am I? Alrighty. If you have a question tonight, happy to answer them, but it will be at the end as usual. So please don't forget to put it in all capital letters so it stands out for me and I can find it in the chat as we go through. So housekeeping, keeping your home beautiful, making it, you know, luxurious, the cheapskates way. This show came about, and this was last week's show, so we're sort of running a week behind, but this show came about from a comment that was left on a blog post I wrote. And it got me thinking again, because we make a home for our family or we try to make a home for our family. And that's the fun part of being a grown-up, isn't it? But the unfun part or the hard part is taking care of that home it's the housekeeping the the day-to-day -day cleaning the nitty-gritty that has to be done over and over and over again it's like cooking dinner you do it every night same old same old so years and years and years ago before even Hannah was born I started to um develop some sort of routine now I am a very routine based person i like routines they keep me on track means i get stuff done it frees up a lot of time for me so that i can then do what i want to do without stressing about stuff so over the years i came up with this housekeeping routine five days and as i said the boys were babies when i started doing it but it means over five days, our whole house is cleaned from ceiling to floor. Now, I'm saying clean, folks. It's not necessarily tidy because the two are very different things. And we have been up until the last 12 months, five people, five adults for a few years now, all with hobbies and all with stuff and all doing all sorts of things. And, of course, the last two years with people working from home, it has been a challenge. But huh? I stuck to my routine. I stuck to my routine and I would just, yeah, if I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning. Now, it's really simple. It is really, really simple. It's one room or one area of our house a day, Monday through Friday. I don't do housework other than the basics on Saturdays. And on Sundays, I might do a load of washing, but Sunday is usually our day for 
you know, gardening. Um, we might go go for a drive somewhere, although we're not going for a drive anywhere. If fuel's going to be over two dollars twenty a litre. Um, we might start walking. Um, I only work five days a week. I don't do housework over the weekend. Neither does my family. So even when the kids were little, you know, I would do this. Now it takes, these days, it takes no more than half an hour a day to do, flip through the routine. And often it can be less. Now, I'll give you an example. Today is Tuesday. And on a Tuesday, I do our bedroom and our bathroom. And sometimes I will do the main bathroom. I don't use the main bathroom, so I don't clean it. The boys use it, the boys clean it. Occasionally, though, I will zip in and clean it to my satisfaction, not theirs. Now, this morning, it took me 20 minutes to do, to do it, and it's done for the week. Now, I'm going to give it to you in two parts because there are some things I do every day. Now, bear with me while I try to do this because... <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but let me see if I can get this to pop up. Here we go. Yes, it worked. Can you see that? It says, this is my daily bedroom routine. It takes five minutes in the morning. Now, these days, I'm the last one out of bed, so I get to make it. I've always, I think it's something that came from my mum, get out of bed, throw the blankets back or the doona back and let the bed air off while I'm having a shower and getting dressed. Before I leave the bathroom, again, because I'm the last one up, I'm the last one in the bathroom, I give, a, give the basin a swish and swipe, I brush the toilet, um, hang up my towels, make sure the windows are open a little bit to let some air in, someone closes it because it gets cold I open it I like the airflow through the bathroom um dry the shower now this is something I don't scrub the showers I dry the shower with the bath mat after every time every time it's wet it gets dried with the bath mat that cleans it it cleans well it's rinsed off we've taught everyone to you know splash the tiles and the screen to rinse off the soap and then you dry it so there's no mildew there's no soap scum it doesn't need to be scrubbed occasionally i will get some miracle spray and go spritz 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 swish 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 but not very often the shower is clean then as soon as i get dressed and that takes it should not take you more than one minute to do that to dry your shower as soon as you get dressed, make your bed. It's easy. If you do it straight away, it's easy. Open your curtains, open the windows, straighten the bedside tables. Um, you know, if you've been reading, make sure your book's neat and tidy. If you've got any dishes, you've had a midnight snack or the somebody lying next to you has had a midnight snack or you've got a glass of water or whatever, take them out to the kitchen. Collect any dirty laundry. Take it to the laundry, put the dishes in the kitchen, your bedroom's done. You don't need to go back to it again. It's done. It's tidy for the day. So you don't have to worry about it. Everything's done. That's what I really like um, about this routine. And it should not take you more than five minutes to do that. It really shouldn't. Then I do, um, hmm, let me see. Then I do a weekly one, which is what I did today. Now it's a bit more in depth. Um, takes a little bit longer, about 20 minutes. You don't have to do that 20 minutes all in one. You could do some in the morning, some in the afternoon if you're racing around. But it doesn't take long. Now, it. let me see if I can do this again too. It's a little, little more because it's a weekly clean. And this, let's uh, see if you can see it. Sorry about, I tried to squash it onto the one um, image, so sorry about that. But 
you know, instead of making your bed once a week, strip it. Get up, gather the towels and the bath mats, face washes, take them to the laundry, put them on to wash. While they're washing, you go back into your bedroom, you get your broom. Now, I just use my soft broom that I use for the floors. Zip around the cornices, catch any cobwebs, brush along the top of the window sill, so uh, the window frame, the top of it, so the dust doesn't gather there. Um, use your broom. And scoot along the skirting boards to dust the skirting boards. You're not bending if you're doing that. There's no bending. You just go, it's done. Now, if you've got a cobweb broom, use that. I don't have a cobweb broom. I just use my soft broom. Um, the windows are cleaned inside every week. And it's a simple, simple thing. It's a, a damp microfiber cloth and a dry microfiber cloth. Damp. Wash it with a damp one, dry it with a dry one. The windows are done every week. Um, if you've got um, pictures on the walls, dust them. Dust your furniture. Chest of drawers, the bedside tables, the bed head. Um, I have a chair in our bedroom that I actually use a clothes brush on because it's fabric. So I just brush it with a clothes brush. Um, collect any, you know, any dirty washing, take it out to the laundry, ready to go in the machine when your sheets and towels come out, remake your bed with um, fresh sheets so it's all comfy to get into. Um, do your ensuite if you've got one. And it's pretty much basically what you do every day. Empty the waste paper basket. That's something I only do once a week. Put out fresh towels because you've changed the towels in your ensuite. Um, so put out fresh towels, a clean bath mat, clean face washes if you use them. Sweep your floor, mop it if you've got tiles or vinyl or whatever. Back in your bedroom floor and it's done. Your bedroom's done from top to bottom. And it should not take you any more than 20 minutes. Now, someone is going to say, yes, it will take longer. And maybe it will. But guess what? It'll take longer the first time you do it. The next time you do it, the next week, will be a little bit faster. And after that, it'll be even faster still. Still, because soon, all you'll be doing is like not even cleaning. You will just be maintaining. So you know that you won't have cobwebs. So you can just scoot around really fast. You know the skirting boards aren't dusty. You can scoot around them really fast. The, long, the hardest thing will be remaking the bed. Making beds is hard work, isn't it? It's building a routine. And today the housework was done, 20 minutes, and it was done. So my time was freed up for the rest of the day. I was able to answer some emails. I wrote a couple of articles. I scheduled a few other bits and pieces. The time, my time was my own to do something else with. I got stuff out for tea tonight. I potted in the garden this afternoon because my work for the day was done. It feels really good to have your work for the day done. Now, let me just see if I can scoot through here because I've got on a little bit further. The same, I do the same thing for the rest of the house. Now, um, I don't do the boys' rooms. <laughs> They're adults. They can do their own. Um, you know, they're big people. They're grown-ups. They know how to make a bed. They know how to open the windows. They know, and they know from living with me for all their lives, what has to be done. Do I check it to make sure it's up to my standards? Not all the time. Again, they're adults. Every now and then I might stick my head in and say, oh, look, I think that um, ceiling fan needs dusting and they'll do it. Or can you take your curtains down so they can be washed? Because I do wash the um, curtains every three months. We must live in the dustiest suburb in Melbourne. I swear the dust that our curtains catch is awful. So they get washed every three months. 
doesn't take very long to do that and they can do it on their own if they need to so it's little things that form the routine but by doing that our bedroom every day our bedroom is a haven I don't know if Wayne thinks of it like that but I do I like to go into it it's as I said I have a chair in our room and I will often just sneak off with a cup of tea and a book and sit in the chair and read because it is peaceful and the bedroom is calm because it's clean and tidy now another thing is to make it a habit to put clean washing away immediately so as soon as soon as it comes off the line it gets put away I don't pile it up on the chest of drawers or the chair or the bed it gets put away doesn't matter how late it is or how tired I am I just do it another thing we do and it you know, it's, wasn't easy we had to learn to do these things but another thing um, was when you take your clothes off after work or before bed hang up the things that can be worn again put shoes and handbags or briefcases or backpacks or whatever away don't just drop them on the floor that's messy and it creates more work for you in the long run and we don't want to spend our time working that's not why we live the cheapskates way we want time to enjoy life so you know a weekly routine with a little bit of daily import works wonders and really keeps the whole house clean now i'll go through some more bits with you um let me see what can i <sighs> lost my place again sorry guys um where is it i had it all neatly put out here and as you know i'm very good at losing stuff on the computer um i have as i said it's a five-day routine and it it's um it's really easy now it means i never have to deep clean i never have to spring clean i don't panic um if visitors are coming that the house isn't clean it might there's you know stuff everywhere but we live in our house now the poor woman that left the comment that started this whole thing she she said she struggles because she's got a family and she works and she just finds it too hard she's too exhausted well i have a family and i work and I've had small children and a husband who worked crazy odd hours. You know, he'd be up at 2.30 in the morning to start work at 3 and or he'd be away for days on end for work. And all during that time, I worked too. But I still did this routine. Routines keep you on track. And it's pretty much a simple thing. Monday, I do the kitchen, the dining room, the living room. Tuesday's our bedroom, the bathrooms. Wednesday is um, AJ's room. He does it. So he strips his bed, um, vacuums. He usually vacuums during his lunch break. Um, his dusting is probably not up to par, but you know what? It's better than nothing. Thursday, Tom does his. Thomas is a little bit like me. He's a little bit of a neat freak, likes things just so. Friday used to be Hannah's room. Now it's I pop into the craft room, I run the vacuum over, I dust, and I re-vacuum the living rooms and dust and mop the floors. That's it. That's all I do. And it does not take long. Now, I get comments all the time about, well, I don't know how you do it or you must move so fast. And then I get comments that, well, I'm nobody's slave and I'm not going to do everything for everybody else. Or, or the one that really makes me um, laugh is, we are not doing your children a favour by waiting on them hand and foot. Have to tell you, folks, if you know me, I don't wait on anybody hand and foot. Never have, never will. That one really is hysterical. 
I just won't do it. Look, our kids learnt to make their beds from as soon as they could stand up and pull the doona up. They learnt to put their clothes away as soon as they could reach into the wardrobe to do it. You know, um, they, they've been taught how to look after themselves. And when they were, you know, when the children were children and small, I did do the bulk of it because I was home. Now, as they grew up, as I said, they were taught how to do the chores and they were given more and more responsibility because as a part of the family, they have to pull their weight. They don't get to sit sit around and do nothing while mum and dad work. So while my routine is written as me doing everything, I don't. I don't do everything. Anyone in the household can do it, and they do. They help with the cleaning, the laundry, the cooking, the groceries, the gardening. They all pull their weight. They have to. Because there are days when I don't get out of bed. There are days when I can't get out of bed. And there are days when I can get out of bed, but I can barely make it from the lounge room to the kitchen to get a glass of water. So they have to pull their weight too. What I, what I, um, what I want you to understand or what I hope that this doesn't overwhelm you and don't think that you know we do not live in something out of vogue living <laughs> and we never will because we live in our house we we use our home all the rooms get used and we all spread out and do all sorts of things in our home because it is our home so if you're struggling with the housework, just do it. Just do it. Like I say with anything, just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. If you're really struggling, I will put the links to my routines in the box down there. And you can have a look at them. If you want to follow them, do it. Feel free. But just do it. Now, it will take you a while to get into the rhythm. It took me a while to get into the rhythm. It's not instant. Nothing good is. We have to practice it. And how do you practice it? By doing it over and over and over. So just do it. And get your family involved because they live in the house too. It's up to them to pull their weight. Like I said, even the little ones can help out. If your kids are older, they should most definitely be helping out. And if they want you to take them somewhere, they need to understand that they need to pitch in and help with the chores so that you have the time to take them to wherever they want to go. If they want you to do something for you, they need to pitch in and help with the chores so that you have the time to do that for them. Because otherwise, it won't happen. And that sounds harsh in this um, society we have that believes that um, parents should be bending over backwards to do the best because we want our, we don't want our children to struggle the way we struggled. And we don't. But they still need to understand that they have to pull their weight. So just remember, you're the parent. You get to make the rules. Be firm. Follow through. Kids don't pitch in. They miss out on the birthday party or the game or whatever it was they wanted. And yes, there may be tantrums. There might be tears. There probably will be. There might be harsh words spoken. But they're kids. They're kids. They're learning. You're the adult. You already know. So let them have their tantrum and their tears and use it as a teaching moment for them. <laughs> If you stick to your word, they'll only test you once or twice. And then they'll figure out that they don't pull their weight. 
they don't get your extra time. But if you give in, you will be their slave forever. And that's on you then, not on them, but on you. Now, I know, <laughs> trust me, I know. I've had three kids, raised three kids. I know they don't like emptying the dishwasher and they don't like, um, Hannah hates, absolutely hates to this day, hates hanging, she will do the washing she doesn't mind putting the washing in the washing machine. She'll sort it, put it in the machine. She'll hang it on the clothes horse. She loathes hanging the washing on the clothes line. That was a battle we had constantly to get her to do that. We worked it out eventually. Um, so pick your battles. <laughs> pick your battles. Stand firm. Make sure everybody in the household knows that you're creating a home for everybody, not just one person, not just you, not just one member of the family, but for the whole family. So it's a family home. So the whole family needs to pitch in and help. And I know it sounds like you can sit there and go, well, you know, that's not going to work in my house because my, my kids won't do this and my partner won't do this and my husband works long hours and he has to do this or we do shift work or make it work for you make it work for you you know i'm i'm an organizer i don't function in a mess i don't function in clutter i actually grind to a complete halt if if something is cluttered or messy it absolutely overwhelms me and i struggle to get through it so i put things away when i finish with them I remind everyone else in the household to put things away when they finished with them. Uh, say it nicely so I'm not lagging, nagging. Um, I try to live by a place for everything and everything in its place. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But there are, hmm, you see the craft room, you've seen the kitchen, you see, you know, our dining area. There's two areas of our home that are nothing but mess nothing but mess it's not my mess it is not my mess but I picked the battle and I think I've won the war and I've learned to live with that mess as long as it stays within the confines of those two particular areas I try not to gripe about it although I do sometimes because it really does annoy me um but I won't risk life and limb moving stuff to clean in those areas either. So if they want their stuff there, they have to do the cleaning. What I do do and have done is throw out anything that creeps out of those areas and isn't put away when I mention it. And they know I will because I've done it. I don't care what it is. I don't care how much it's worth or what it costs. I don't care where it came from or what it does or who it belongs to. If it creeps out of bounds and it isn't put away, when I mention it, it's gone. Did it cause tantrums? Oh, boy, did it what caused tantrums? One day you didn't hear them. But it stopped the creep. And now when I say, oh, hang on a minute, that needs to be put away, it gets put away. So while I hate looking at those areas, I'm not the only one that lives in our home. We all have to be happy to live here because it's our home. So I put up with it. <laughs> you might need to make a few concessions something like that is in happening in your home now my routines i wrote out years and years ago years and years ago but they haven't changed really other than you know hannah's room is now the craft room i know that um hmm, trying to be diplomatic here no 
if you're going to wonder what on earth this has to do with living the cheapskates way, well, you know, for a start, if you can keep your home clean and tidy, then you are not wasting time and energy looking for things that you've lost, that you know you have. If you can keep your home clean and tidy, then you're not wasting money by buying things that you know you have somewhere you just can't find because it's in the mess. If you keep your home clean and tidy, then unexpected visitors aren't an issue. If you can keep your home clean and tidy, it holds its value better and your um, maintenance costs are lower. You're not replacing things because you haven't taken care of them. Um, and it's just so much nicer to live in a clean and comfortable home. It really is. Now, everyone's idea of clean and comfortable, totally different. And you know what? That's fine. That is perfectly fine because we are all individuals and we all live different lifestyles. While we might all have the one goal of wanting to live debt-free, cashed up and laughing, again, that goal or the um, meaning of that goal is different for all of us. So do what you have to do for you. Um, I want to encourage you. I, I don't want this to sound um, like a waste of time and I don't want it to sound like it's, um, I don't want to sound like I'm preaching to you. I don't want to sound like I'm better than anyone else because trust me, I'm not. <laughs> trust me, I'm not. Um, what I want to do is encourage you to do what you can, when you can, with what you have. Um, you know, this is, these routines are mine. It works, it works for me, it works for my family. So take them, tweak them, make them work for you and your family. In your situation, you may have six kids, um, two parents working, four dogs, 10 hens and a cow to milk. So your, your time is going to be very different to mine. Make it work for you. And remember, it's not set in cement. It's flexible. If you've got to change it, change it. The other thing I really would like to encourage you to do is be satisfied with what you have. I was talking to Karen about this yesterday. Hi, Karen. Um, it may not be. Um, okay. Be content with your furniture. Be content with your home. Be content with your clothes. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't strive for something else. But if you are always unhappy, um, if you are always finding fault, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be miserable. And if you're miserable, life is so much harder. But if you're miserable, your family will be miserable. And your home won't be comfortable. And it won't be happy. And it won't be the sanctuary that it should be, that you want it to be for your family. Now, I like our house. I actually really like our house. There's a lot of things I would like to do to it, but I really like it. The bones are good. I would love new carpet. That's not in our budget at the moment. It won't be for a long time. I'd also really like a new lounge. I'd like one that doesn't sag, but again, it, it's not in our budget. So instead, I keep the carpets clean by making sure shoes don't come inside. I vacuum the whole house every week and living areas get done Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If there's a spot in the carpet, it gets cleaned up straight away. I try really hard to look after it because it's what I've got for now and I want it to be comfortable. I can live with them. I can live with the carpet. I can live with the lounge for now because I know that eventually they will be replaced with something that I really love. You know, um, with our lounge, it's clean. It's, it's actually really clean. 
because it's always been covered because when we got it we had a little kid so I put a sheet over it and the sheets just stayed um but it has been well sat on over the years so it does have a bit of a sag in it but the chairs are in excellent condition they really are so for now I'm happy to live with it the way it is and when the time is right we will replace it with something else that we really love I've decided to be content with what I have. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to want something better in the future. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to, I'm not going to work for something better in the future. But I'm going to look after what we have for now because that's what we have and what we have to live with. I know, I know a lady who was constantly, constantly, um, dissatisfied she'll get something new and within a few months she decides she didn't like it because someone a friend might have got a new kitchen so she decides she didn't like hers so she would deliberately deliberately not care for it if you know there was a burn mark on the laminex well oh dear if there were scuffs and scratches oh, well, we'll have to get a new kitchen. She deliberately didn't look after those things. She did the same with the lounge. She got a new lounge and then a few months later, a friend got a new one and it was like, I don't like this one anymore. So the cat was allowed to scratch it and within a few months it was trashed and they had to get a new one. Now, this particular family is constantly, constantly robbing Peter to pay Paul. And they will always be because they are never satisfied with what they have. And they're not prepared to be happy with what they have while they work for something better. Oh, gosh, I'm not putting this very well tonight. I really, um, our home is our sanctuary. It's what we have for now. So we need to make the most of it and make the best of it. To do that, keep it clean, keep it tidy. That's a really good place to start. Once we've done that, then we can move on to you know, making it something special. And that might be something as simple as putting a tablecloth on the table. Or, you know, when our kids were little, Friday night, I would use our good dishes and we would have candles on the table. It was special. Friday night dinner, it was special. And they'd sit up and they would have their special glass, which were little, um, I think they're sherry glasses, the little stem glasses, they would have one. They felt so important and it was so special. So that Friday night dinner, they loved it. And it became something to look forward to and it made our home a happier home little things like that. It could be something as simple as bringing some plants inside. Now, if you don't have pretty pots to put them in, do you have a jug? Do you have a pretty glass bowl that you can sit the plant in? Do you have hmm, buckets? Get a bucket and paint it. Um, I'm about to start um, painting a couple of plastic buckets that I got from Reject Shop. After Easter, where are they? I had them here the other day. Can't find them. A couple of buckets and I'm going to paint them so they'll become planters because the planters I like are, you know, $25 each. The buckets were only $1.50 each. The paint came from Kmart and it was $2.45 for the tub and it will do a lot of buckets. So there's lots of things you can do. It might be something as simple as having a pretty hand towel in the bathroom. Even if you only bring it out when visitors come. <laughs> when our kids were little, the good towels and hand towels only came out when visitors came. Because grimy little hands will come in from outside and you, you all know that. So little things make a difference. Or drinking your morning cup of tea out of a pretty mug or a pretty cup. 
going to the op shop and buying a cup, saucer and plate that matches for your afternoon tea. It doesn't have to be Royal Dalton. It just has to be pretty if that's what you like. All those little things make, make our home nicer, make our homes more comfortable and make us more content with what we have. And they don't cost money. Well, not a lot of money anyway. Um, yeah. Creating a home is hard work. <laughs> but we can all do it. And we can all do it without spending a fortune. Because I'm sure you've been into a house that has been absolutely beautiful, you know, with the most magnificent furnishings and beautiful floors and not a thing out of place. But it's been cold. Even if it's, you know, the middle of summer, that it's had that cold feeling about it because it's not a home. It's a show place. Well, we live in our house, so it's our home. And while I like it to be clean and tidy and comfortable and I like nice things, it still has to fit with us. So if you can do that for your home, as you get something better, you'll appreciate it more. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I'm 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 really mucking this up a bit because I'm I'm feeling so um I feel a bit inadequate when I tried to answer the lady. And say, look, you know what? We all get tired and we all have kids and we all work and we all. And I didn't want to sound like I was dismissing her concerns or her feelings because I wasn't and I'm not. I just know that if you just do it, it gets done. If you sit and think about it, it doesn't. And if you do it, you feel better. If you sit and think about it, you don't. All right, question time, guys. Let me see how I'm going here. Wow. Oh, my goodness. All the co comments. Okay. Uh, all righty. Okie dokie. Okay. <laughs> Um, I had the privilege yesterday of having morning tea with Karen. It was really nice. It's, it's really, really nice to sit and chat and talk and catch up with, with friends, which we don't often get a chance to do. So it was really, really nice. And she mentioned that she'd been decluttering. And I said, well, that's very strange because I have two. And it's only the last you know, probably three or four months I've had this, this almost like a... Um, I was going to say a, an urge, a calling, something to declutter. And I have been. And then I noticed that lots of people are in that stage too. And I'm wondering if we haven't, um, after our lockdowns, and I know lots of people decluttered during the lockdowns, there was, you know, people going crazy cleaning out stuff. But after the lockdowns ended, we're starting to get our lives back again. Maybe realize that we need to simplify a little and free up time, free up energy for us. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, that everyone seems to be decluttering. All right. Michelle, um, I absolutely, I feel, I feel your pain, I really feel your pain. I don't have files. I don't have office clutter. I just have other stuff. And it annoys me. It really does. But it's in well, two areas now and that's it. As soon as it moves out, it has to get pulled back or I and I have thrown stuff out. I've picked it up and I've thrown it out. 
I haven't told anyone. I've just done it. You come looking for it. Where is it? It's in the bin. If they're fast, they can rescue it before midnight. Otherwise, it goes. Now, it's a bit hard if it's office stuff because it might be business related and you can't really do that. But, yeah. It's really, really hard. Really, really hard. I love the way that we're supposed to be in a paperless society and it doesn't quite work. Um, right. um, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry. I'm looking for questions, guys. It's nearly time to finish. Remember, hashtag magnets so we can do this. Um, do this draw. Okay. All right. Okay. Maybe we need to do a show on decluttering, how to do it. I think, you know, you've all got it under control, though. Mm -hmm. Beverly's. Beverly's, I love this comment. Gleaming white kitchens remind me of my laboratory lab at high school. I don't like white kitchens because they show the dirt. Our kitchen is a working kitchen. I cook in it. I clean. I bake in it. I preserve in it. So I I did go light up because the room needed to be lightened up. But um, I'd never go white because I'd just go insane. We just too hard. We had lots of toys that that happened to, too. Um, I think most mums have that sometimes. Um, uh, a decluttering show. Okay. A decluttering show. I have to say, I'm ruthless when I declutter. I, um, Not that you'd know it, looking at the shelves behind me, but I am ruthless. Um if I don't if I don't like it, if I don't use it, if I haven't used it, if I can't remember the last time I used it, if it doesn't suit our life anymore, it goes. Um, if we've outgrown it, um, our tastes have changed, it goes. I don't keep stuff now i don't send it to the tip if it's good i might try to sell it or i donate it or i'll give it to someone but i don't um i don't hang on to stuff anymore because it was you know great great grandma's first tooth or something i don't know i don't do that we do that it, it has to go um I don't like feeling weighed down by by stuff, and it can be a real weight. Um, yeah. Alrighty, so let me see if I've got this. Uh oh, is this working? All right, I'm about to do. Does everyone put hashtag magnets so they can be in the drawer? Because I'm about to click the button don't know how to let me see if I can figure it out um, okay that's not going to work okay I'm about to hit the draw button and it's drawing 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 going through Leonie Casey, 
There you go. So, Leonie, you will need to... Um, I'll be with you in a moment, Maureen. Leonie, send me a contact us with your postal address in it and I'll pop those in the mail to you tomorrow. Okay, Maureen wants to know, do I have a routine for my garden? Not like I do for the house, Maureen, because I like to spend time in the garden every day. It's my happy place. Yeah, it makes me sound every period, doesn't it? No, I like to be, I like to be out in the garden. I like, I really actually really enjoy puttering about in the garden and in the yard. And I, I really, really, really like mowing the lawn, but I'm not allowed to anymore. The Wayne and the boys seem to panic when I do that even if I get them to start the mower for me they don't like it so but I love being outside so I'm out in the yard every day probably might not be for long it might only be 15 or 20 minutes but I'm out there doing something every day today I um cracking my brains so, I don't know what have I got lockdown head or something I don't know but racking my brains about um, something for, I've got cabbages and cauliflowers and broccoli in at the moment. Trying to figure out what I could put over them to stop the white cabbage moths and the beetles. It's a bit like hit myself in the head. I was reading Annabelle's um, blog that I think was her blog, Friday Post um, from Bluebirds Are Nesting, and she had the um, food screeny things over her cabbages. And I went, oh, dozy, I've got a box of them in the shed. That's what they're for. So then I went to the shed and got them out and pop them over them. So then I was decided I'd put the um, poly tunnel over the um, little seedlings that are in because we're supposed to get colder days. So I want to, and it acts like a little hot house, but in the ground because I like to direct sow. So I put the, got that out. So I had to scrounge around under the veranda because I just pop those under the veranda, scrunch around on my hands and knees under the veranda to drag that out and make sure it was all right to put that up. So I don't have a routine as such, but we usually spend time, if we're going to spend a lot of time, it's on a Sunday in the garden um, where we can be out there together and I, Wayne does the hard stuff and I give the orders. Um, that's, that's, you know... I'll say to him, can you dig over this or can you move this or this tree needs to be pruned and I can't reach it, um, that sort of thing. So I don't have a routine as such, but I do try to spend some time outside every day. Um, and it's good, um, good to be out in the sunshine, soaking up some of that vitamin D, saves on buying the tablets. Um, um, So I hope that answers your question. Um, I've got um, two um, pack and pear trees coming. So we got on Sunday we got the and they're little ones. They're um, dwarf varieties. So I'm a bit excited about that because they go in pots. So we've got the pots ready for those on Sunday. So they should arrive next week. So I'm a bit excited about that because I love pack and pears. Um, cornflour is a deterrent. You do need to reuse it over and over and over. Whereas if you put the screens over them, keeps everything off them, not just the moths. Um, all right, it's 8.35. I think we're going to finish. Don't forget, Leonie, you need to flip over to the website and click contact us and send me your address so that I can pop those magnets in the mail to you. I will be, a bit, 
I will be back next week. I will think about um, a decluttering, a decluttering challenge that we can do. And because um, that, that could be fun, we might have, hmm, I was going to say we could have a prize, but we're decluttering we're, we're, and have a prize. That's going to sound really good, isn't it? Um, um, yeah, Andrea, not all dwarfs are short. <laughs> Some of them can get very, very tall. Um, so um, there you go. All righty. Um, have a great week, everyone. Remember, keep calm and keep cheap skating, and I'll see you next week. Thank you, Delaney, for moderating for us. Thank you, everyone else, for joining us. If you like tonight's show, thumbs up would be good. If you haven't already subscribed, please do because we're getting closer to drawing that food dehydrator. It will be gone very, very soon. And if you know someone who might hmm, like the show, use the share button to um, send them the link. That's all it does is send them the link. They don't get anything else from us. We don't bombard them with anything else. And um, thank you for commenting. If you need to leave comments after the show in the comments underneath and I'll do my best to answer your questions um, tomorrow when I can. Um, bye.